All right, so the game really wants us to spend our powers. And that is, that is not how we do that. But uh, yeah, so, I mean, we've been talking about this for a little while, and I do expect that we're probably gonna use squad incendiary ammo soon. Although, to be honest with you, I was having some second thoughts about this because we do have more squad mates with ammo abilities than perhaps I was giving us credit for, and maybe, maybe we don't need this quite as much as I had initially thought we might. So part of me is hesitant to go all out on the squad ammo uh, investment here, and perhaps, you know, we instead go all out on pull, and then we've said previously that flashbang grenade, perhaps we're comfortable with just leaving this at level one, whereas maybe if we start to unlock other bonus powers that we want to try out, those could be abilities that we'd like to invest in more heavily than just one point for flashbang grenade. So I think that's the real question when it comes down to this stuff is, you know, do we go all out on the ammo or do we have a specific bonus power that we actually think we might want to invest more points in? I don't think a uh, flashbang grenade is that ability just because it's really good, but it's really good at level one and then it doesn't get that much stronger as you level it up. So it's, you know, we're going to play it by ear a little bit, I think, and we may even, especially because we seem to have a bit of an abundance of elements here, we may even reset our powers, which is something that, you know, would have liked to have avoided having to do, because of course it does cost element zero, but like I said, I think we overscanned that when we were looking out uh, on our planet scanning early on, and so we might have some element zero to spare, but uh, either way, I don't think it's an urgent choice here, of course we, we could we could immediately spend the uh, points to upgrade incendiary ammo, but uh, we might wait just a little bit before we do that. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself here because what we'd like to do, what we'd like to do is get one of these big missions done. And we have some big ones for sure. They're starting, starting to uh, stockpile up here. We have several loyalty missions, Garrus, Morden, Jack. We still have some recruitment missions for Tally, and Thane, Miranda's loyalty mission, Jacob's loyalty mission. So the, uh, the, uh, the preserve remains downstairs in the tank, but, uh, that's something we're still gonna wait to do a little bit longer, I think. But, as for what comes next, remind me where exactly we are, but, uh, oh, we're back at the Shadow Broker base, as I think we were saying previously. Uh, you know, it's a place we'd like to go with some regularity. Technically, after every mission, we can get some bonus stuffs there. So it is perhaps worth doing that. It is pretty far away from everything else, though, unfortunately. It does mean we're gonna have to pay a bit in fuel costs, but let's fuel back up real quick. And what I'd like to do is I'm thinking, I'm thinking, we go the recruitment route here, and we just say hello to an old friend. All right, there we go. What am I referring to? Of course. It's gotta be Tally. This is uh, an interesting way in which we get, oh, <laughs> get to the spot. I was gonna say, if you're looking at the red lines to see the directionality of the various mass relays we need to use to get here, then uh, at first I was looking at the red lines that are on either side, so the cross section of the circle on our marker over here. And so I was looking at that, I was going, oh man, we're like going out of the galaxy, back into the galaxy, what on earth? But no, those are, uh, those are not uh, the lines showing the trajectory of how we're getting there. It's just hourglass to Omega, to Hawking Eda, and then maybe to Far Rim? Oh no, down to whatever this one is. Shadow C. So, as we were saying before, this is, technically speaking, way out in the Terminus systems in a section called the Perseus Vale, which is a place that is very, very rarely visited because it is basically the deepest you can possibly go in Geth-controlled space. So it is pretty much as dangerous as it gets. But, uh, you know, you know, if we have a friend over there, we gotta help him. We gotta help him out. Okay, so, well, this is the spot we're looking for, Haystrom, where we can recruit Tally. Before we do that, 
let's take a look at all the other planets in this system and perhaps even neighboring systems and then we'll finish with uh doing the actual mission in question so before we go to haste room let's see this unexplored world which is Karum, once a starship refueling station for the quarians also bear in mind of course at the moment this is get controlled space but once upon a time although maybe not right by the quarian homeworld is still relatively close to Rannoch, where the quarians uh originally were from so i mean it's as we are seeing here a place where there's probably some quarian history so yeah once a starship refueling station for quarians Charum has expanded under Get rule. Thousands of orbital platforms surround the planet and its many moons, refining helium into helium-3. A vast Get fleet comes and goes between Charum and Haystrom, preventing all but the most stealthy of spy drones from discovering any information about it. Current estimates place the Get fleet numbers between 5,000 and 10,000 ships with unknown levels of armament. Travel advisory. Most intelligence estimates state that approaching Charum, I don't know if it's a hard CH or soft CH, but is tantamount to suicide. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, needless to say, 5,000 to 10,000 Geth ships means good freaking luck not getting obliterated. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Population 250,000 to 500,000 platforms. People don't really know. Colony occupied in 1895. Larger station Hell's Hive Dina Station. Yeah, so uh, not the safest of places. We'll scan it just to see if there's anything interesting here anomaly-wise, but we're not seeing anything. And as we've said many times before, when it comes to resources, we're looking pretty good. So we're mostly just checking these things to see if there might be anything we might want to discover. But uh, let's see. We're 33% done. We haven't gone to Haste Room, although I'm not sure if we technically have already explored it. I think we must have because we're 33%, or I think we must not have because... We have Charum, Haystrom, and then this planet here. And if I know my math, we're dividing by three. That would explain why we have done 33%. So, Gotha? A dwarf planet, Gotha has a pressure cooker atmosphere that brings its surface temperature to a scorching level. Carbon dioxide and ethane are plentiful in the planet's hazy atmosphere. There has been some speculation in the mining community about whether all the precious metals were mined by the Quarians before they fled the system some three centuries ago. Rumors abound that anyone who could braid the Geth in the system could find loads of naturally occurring diamond on Gotha, but this is likely just a starship legend. Travel advisory. Gotha is in Geth space. All civilian traffic is prohibited. And, obviously, as we were just saying, this is deep in Geth space. Uh, well... As we're seeing here, everyone is saying, or all these travel advisors are saying, don't go here, whatever you do. It means instant death. Obviously, we're going here, because, I mean, we're Commander Shepard. Also, we have a Normandy that has stealth systems, so, you know, hopefully the Geth can not actually see us when we have those enabled. But, uh, I'm not sure if we actually know if that's the case or not. We're just gonna, you know, we're gonna test it out, one way or the other. And, uh, yeah, as, as it was saying... 99.64 Earth atmospheres worth of atmospheric pressure. I think that does qualify as a uh, pressure cooker. Yeah, that is actually terrifying how ridiculously dense that atmosphere is. Um, I don't even know. I don't know if I can imagine what that would even mean. Regardless of how it's 590 degrees Celsius. If it was a normal temperature, a livable temperature, I don't even know what that kind of atmospheric pressure would do. Let's see, would... A bunch of things that would be liquid under Earth atmosphere would be solid. Things that are gaseous in Earth atmospheric pressure could be liquid or potentially even salt. That'd be crazy. Have a solid oxygen or something? I don't know. Maybe I've got my physics all wrong, but let's check it out. It is a rich planet, as the people were suspecting it might be. I'm kind of curious how rich we talking here. Where there was actually a... An element zero deposit, which is usually something that's kind of hard to come by, but that is something every time we saw it in the past, we always made a point of mining it, so we're actually doing pretty well on that front. So uh, we don't need that, and yeah, I mean, there are good sources of several resources here, but uh, I don't think we need them, and as we've said in the past, if we find ourselves desperate in the future, we could always try to go back and uh, check them out later. Also, this star, the, you know, the one that we just casually just 
throw straight into and are currently engulfed in. It's ginormous. I mean, ginormous. So I'm assuming the last planet here in the system is Hastro. Let's just see, is there anything else in this? There is. There are other areas over here. Let's check them out. Let's see, is it... Yeah, it looks like it's just going to be Ma'at, because we have 50% of the far rim explored here. Aptly named as well, given how it is quite literally as far as you can possibly get in the galaxy. Let's see, this looks pretty small. And by pretty small, I mean... I was going to say tiny. Then I saw that huge planet, and, uh, well, let's just say I bit my tongue. This thing is ginormous. Amut is an enormous hydrogen helium giant. Yeah, you could say that again. With a mass approximately nine times that of Jupiter and nearly 2,900 times that of Earth. Yeah, it's pretty big. Despite massive pressure, its core has failed to ignite in a fusion reaction, qualifying it as a failed star. That's very interesting. It uh, normally, perhaps, would have become a star, but for whatever reason, it, it failed in that regard. It is believed to have captured all other planet-sized bodies in the solar system as moons, or in impact events, leading to its name, Devour. Oh, that sounds safe. Not intimidated by this phenomena, the Geth have colonized many of Amut's moons and skinned the hydrogen from Amut's upper atmosphere. Travel advisory, Amut is in Geth space. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Uh, yeah. Let's check it out. I am curious. Unfortunately, no anomalies, not a, a rich planet, because it does have an interesting story to it. I wish there was a little more behind it than just that. I wish that it uh, had meaningful ramifications to that state. But, uh, I mean, like, look at this. I, again, we've seen this before, where I think it's somewhat a matter of the perspective here, but this planet looks like it is at least twice the size of the star that it is orbiting, if not more. Which, uh, I mean, obviously that's not actually the case, but it is all the more alarming for that reason. But it looks like that's everything here in Ma'at. So let's head back over to Dolan. And we will check out Hastrum and get this thing started. So, what is the deal on Hastrum? So, formerly a Corian colony, Hastrum was established to observe the phenomena on Dolan, the system's parent star. Dolan appeared to be unstable, with a high possibility of erupting prematurely into a red giant. Hastrum was lost to the Geth in 1896 CE. Soon after, all communication from the planet and its attendant space stations ceased. The Geth have shown no signs of treating Dolan as a threat over the past three centuries, other than establishing several space stations near it. Dolan's magnetic eruptions and solar output overwhelm most communication near it, and it is unclear how the Geth have compensated. Yeah, bear that in mind. I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, it's a big star, it, it, it does weird big star things, but uh, that means what, things like tons of extra radiation that would fry a bunch of stuff, uh, electromagnetic disturbances that, as we're saying here, would disrupt communications. Somehow the Geth have found a way to compensate for that? That's I mean, impressive. Today, spy probe scans indicate extensive orbital construction around Hastrum, housing thousands of Geth platforms and an unknown number of Geth software mines. It is not known how many Geth are on the planet's surface. Spy probes face interference from Dolan, making remote scanning difficult, as we were just saying. Resource estimations based on Geth mining, refining, and fabricating practices suggest that the planet has at least 20 more years of use before it is exhausted. Intelligence experts speculate that the Geth have not exploited all of their resources because they wish to keep some in reserve for repairs. Travel Advisory Hastrum is a Geth stronghold. Military spy drones using cutting-edge stealth technology are the only vehicles that have returned unharmed from Geth space. All civilian traffic is prohibited. So yeah, again, not only is it a place where you don't want to go, you know, everyone else who has gone here has been destroyed or harmed in some way, shape, or form. Which, uh, actually, technically speaking, is an interesting thing to bear in mind in the future, because that will uh, be relevant context when we are having some future discussions way, way down the line. So 
I may forget, but uh, somewhere in the deep recesses of your mind, store that information. So other than that, I mean, it's zero, zero atmospheric pressure. I mean, it may be that the star, uh, what was it, Dolan, has basically, with all of its crazy radiation, burned away all of the atmosphere with its, uh, burned away is maybe not the correct way of phrasing it, but blown away, metaphorically, all the atmosphere with its, uh, solar wind. So, okay. Let's, uh, oh, we can't even scan it. Okay, so we're, we're just landed. We're just landed. Okay, so, we need to choose which squad base we're gonna bring. And on this mission, well, I mean, you, you could probably guess what kind of kind of enemies we're gonna run into. I mean, we're we're in the deepest part of Geth space. I mean, like, I'll give you one guess. Right, so it's gonna be collectors, so that means we wanna put on barriers people like Miranda. No, no, it's Geth, it's Geth. That means lots of shields, and we want to have people who are good against shields and people who are good against synthetics more generally. That means that uh, Morden, absolutely disqualified uh, in all likelihood. I mean, maybe some cases where some Geth have armor, but uh, it's very rare that that's the case. And things like Incinerate are significantly weaker against synthetics than they are against organic. So Morden, probably the weakest choice for this mission. Jacob, also kind of an uh, anti-armor person with at least the incendiary ammo component of his kit, so probably not a great decision to include him either. Jack, as we've said many times before, is in an awkward place where she's a hard inclusion until we finally unlock her warp ammo, then suddenly she becomes a good person to use against barriers. Otherwise, we basically just have access to all of her abilities and we can do all of her abilities more effectively than she can, so that just makes it kind of tough. But uh, then Kasumi, you could you could definitely justify including her. She has Overload, which is of course a great ability against synthetics and against shielded enemies. So very good, probably the top ability once in this situation, or one of the top abilities. And then Shadow Strike, you know, good for damage. Uh, pretty much any situation in Flashbang Grenade. Uh, I think it still works to a certain extent, at least against Geth. They tend not to be using that many special abilities, so it may not be a huge deal against them. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely a, a, a good, if not very good, candidate. We, of course, just recently acquired Samara, and her abilities are Throw, Pull, and we have not yet unlocked Reeve. That's the one we get from doing her loyalty mission. Those are not particularly good abilities against shields, uh, for the most part. Uh, we're, I mean, we're going to need to get rid of defensive layers before we can use those, so again, much like for our biotic abilities, means we want to have someone else who can get rid of the shields or whatever other defensive layers before those other abilities become relevant. Once we do unlock Reeve for Samara, she's going to be one of, if not our best, anti-barriers characters, so probably going to stay on the uh, bench at least until we can do that, or at least until we, you know, start going up against different types of enemies. Zaid is another very, very strong candidate because of that squad disruptor ammo. That's a huge addition. So we are almost certainly going to include him. Uh, Miranda also has Overload. And she's good at everything, of course. It's never a bad decision to take her, but we've used her a lot. And I think we have enough alternative options here that we can use someone else on this occasion. And especially because Garrus not only has Overload, as we were saying, a great ability against a bunch of Geth, but he's... The only person on this team who teamed up with Tally back in Mass Effect 1. So for that reason, all the more reason to bring him. So he's definitely making the team. And then I think we'll complement that with Zaid as well. Also potentially might be see some uh, additional benefit out of having some longer range weapons, sniper rifles. Assault rifles not bad at long range as well. So having two people who have assault rifles and sniper rifles also probably good for that reason. So, we were talking about this before. Do we invest in squad incendiary ammo? We were planning on doing it for a while, but at least in this mission, we are almost certainly going to, or we are certainly going to be using Zaid's disruptor ammo on everyone for every weapon. So, 
that means at least short term it's actually not really necessary so for that reason we may actually opt to for the time being at least perhaps invest further in coal which at this point would increase the duration by another couple of seconds or to be honest we could wait and not invest anything because we were talking about potentially looking to change our bonus ability to something other than flashbang grenade in the future once we start to perhaps unlock a few other abilities we might have others that we feel like are worth more investment than just the one point we're comfortable with using on flashbang grenade so i don't think it's gonna be a huge deal if we leave four points unspent here at least for now for garrus unfortunately with just two points we can't fully upgrade overload that would certainly be the thing we'd want to have here rank three is nice let's see it does have a radius it's just 1.2 meters so it's unlikely we i mean we might be able to get a couple of geth if they happen to be standing right next to each other but uh you know it's not like we're going to be disabling an entire group of geth shields with it with that kind of radius whereas if we did have just a few more points and we got to area overload then perhaps we could so that's unfortunate but i think that's still going to be a strong enough skill that it's going to be certainly a big addition then the disruptor ammo that's the big deal for zaid uh other than that i think we're just waiting to get a couple more points to fully upgrade mercenary veteran to get some additional health and weapon damage that is very much zaid specialty so i mean i think that means we just we aren't taking much of anything from a skill point standpoint in terms of weapons let's take a look i don't think we want the particle beam i think the go-to here is probably going to be the arc projector it's good against shields and it's good against synthetics and those are the two things we're expecting here so that's a strong option there is also a specific encounter in which the cane can be very effective of course as we saw the one or two previous times we've used the cane in the past it's kind of gimmicky uh and I, I feel bad whenever we use it because i feel like we're cheating because it's just so powerful so if you'd like a get out of jail free card then feel free to take the cane with you but i think i'm gonna go with the arc projector to just be a little less extreme with it and of course it has more ammo whereas the cane is basically just a one shot ability and then you better hope you get a whole lot of ammo to be able to use that a second time otherwise you're using it once and that's it other than that, uh, use the Geth Plasma Shotgun against Geth. I don't see any problems with that. Yeah, this looks fine. For Garrus and Zaid, let's see. Yeah, we have the Incisor and Matic. What we were talking about, yeah, do we prefer Matic or do we prefer Vindicator for squad mates? And weren't entirely sure. Uh, I think it's pretty close. You could make the case for either. Um... I mean, we could keep Vindicator on one of them, Matic on the other, I suppose. Incisor is definitely still the better uh, sniper rifle, though, so yeah, let's go with this. Oh! Yeah, remember the part when I said radiation might be extreme? Okay, so we did just read a bit about Hastrum and the fact that there is a ginormous star here that uh, is of some significance perhaps because if we just say poke our head out here into the sun, our shields do start overloading, as you can see. Now, this will... As we're seeing here, if we stay out in the sun, completely overload our shields. It shouldn't damage our health, I don't think. No shields. Still a little startling when it gets rid of our shields. But, uh, yeah, so it won't kill you by itself, but it will completely get rid of your shields if you stay out long enough. And then if you go back into the shade, then, of course, eventually you'll get those shields back. I believe it also will reduce the shields of squad mates. Let's just send I'll get there. teammates out there to test. I think we can see from that visual effect at least on Zaid that his shields are going down yeah and you can see at the very bottom as with Garrus that uh their faces are showing up red so yeah they're losing their shields as well so that is something we need to bear in mind for the entirety 
of this mission is we want to try to stay out of the sun as much as we can. Save. Otherwise, we will get fried. Again, it won't kill us by itself. But it is enough to potentially significantly weaken us. Shields are overheating, Shepard. If we stay in the shade, we should be fine. So we do want to try to stay in the shade as much as we can. This doesn't look good. Um, there's a damaged Geth. Okay. Take the med kit that we don't need. Looks like this is everything in here other than the gate controls. Oh, also, let's take a look at our actual journal entry here. So, Talizor Vasnima, expert in combat tech systems hacking. Strong engineering background, familiar with the Normandy. Of course, she was a squad mate in Mass Effect 1. And technically, we did see her back in the the tutorial, actually, for a brief moment. Uh, and then we had to part waves. But uh, we're trying to bring her back on the team in full capacity here. Formerly listed as Tali Zora Naraya, the Korean engineer earned her adult name after helping Shepard defeat Sarah two years ago. Good for her. Tali is currently on a classified assignment for the Migrant Fleet Admiralty Board on Haystrom deep in Geth-controlled space. So, we've gone to Hastrum in the Geth-controlled Dolan system. We need to look for Tally by searching through the ruins, but we need to stay out of the sunlight and avoid Geth attacks. So, uh, as we're seeing here, there definitely has been at least some Geth presence based on that and that log. Alright, so we open that up. Let's get out. Oh, also, before we go any further, let's make a point of using our ammo power to power up each and every weapon. Change weapons. That is one of the primary reasons why we brought Zaid. Let's see, then we have a third weapon, even if they don't. So, one more time. There we go. Okay, so... Let's stick with the long-range stuff at the moment. I think we're going to have a lot of long sight lines of this mission in general. As I was saying, I think... Oh! Okay. We got some get. We've got some get. Let's see. So, uh... There's a lot of space here. All right, we've got get troopers. Are they all get troopers here on the left? Uh, well, now this is what Garrus is here for. Okay, if you guys could say you know, what's going to be a good place to keep cover, I'm actually not really sure. I mean, there's fragile crates here. As we've seen in the past, these will get destroyed if they take too much direct fire. Uh, we want to try to stay in the shade. I mean, that's not bad. That potentially could work. That may be on the dangerous side. Swing to cover. Let's see. Garrus is still waiting to get overload back. It's definitely going to be our skill of choice here. In just about every situation. That might have gotten too Geth. Okay, now their shields are down. That's helpful. Because now that opens up options like Inferno Grenade, Concussion Shot, and uh, all of our other abilities as well. So, I think... The pull. Disable them a bit. As for this one, we'll knock you down. Okay, and then... Hmm. We could charge you, try to advance forward. Why don't we do that? Are you dead? You are not dead. You are disabled, but not dead. Now you are. Okay, I think I heard more. I definitely heard more. Let's see, I see one over, at least on our map. Showing up here, which makes me a little nervous that they might try to flank us. Otherwise, there are two 
closer that I hear, but I don't see. Let's have our squad mates move up I'm on, it. on us. Trying to ascertain as to where exactly these get far right in front of us is the answer. Okay, that one. He is now down. Looks like there's another one right where that one came from. Yep. Okay, Garrus is of course still on cooldown with that overload. So one thing I might want to try to do is see if we can conserve ammo when and where possible. Where exactly did they take up shop? That's a good spot for Zaid. Where are you, Garrus? Oh, right next to us. Okay, that's not terrible either. Basically just going to wait for ooh, Garrus to get off cooldown. Although now that you are no longer shielded, we have other options. And overload on synthetic enemies, even when they have their shields down, I think it's not a terrible thing. Usually, it's not the best idea against uh, organic enemies in that situation, but and we know there's still, yeah, more get over here. Hmm. I don't know exactly where they are, though, which makes me a little nervous. There is this area up here where there's that ramp, and that is somewhat of an interesting option. But it does look like that is much more in the sun, which is, of course, dangerous. Ooh, that did not look that was in the sun, but apparently it was. Oh, one other thing to mention is that uh, although, although the sun will damage our shields, it actually will not damage the Geth shields. Again, we heard about them apparently finding ways to circumvent the radiation, uh, at least when it comes to their communication system. So maybe they found a way to make it work, uh, uh, or we'll find a way to make it so that their shields weren't damaged. I think the red dots we're seeing over here are probably Geth that are directly above us at the moment. Ooh. Or right where? where? Oh, there. Yup. I mean, I guess that qualifies as directly above us. Oh, that is that is technically in the sun. Ow. Okay. Yeah, I think we might actually prefer being up on that elevated platform, come to think of it. There is a little bit of stuffs down here. There's a uh, customized heavy pistol we can scan. So that's something we'll definitely want to do. Yeah, we, I think we might have missed the overload when it was taking cover, but... Can we this real quick? That's heavy pistol damage. As you're getting up here, let's do that, and then give you a little tap to our other weapon. Alright, uh, our squad mates are perhaps getting a little bit overwhelmed at the moment, because I'm just seeing... The... Uh, what was that? Edge gel, I think? Ooh. No, thank you. Yeah, I like this spot got one trooper, two troopers, our friends, okay, Zaid at least is here, I think Garrus looks like, based on the minimap, that he's not that far behind, so, just cussive shot. shot here, I'm trying to save our shotgun ammo to the extent possible, that is our best weapon against shields, well, along with our SMG, actually, so our, our heavy pistol is definitely our least effective weapon, but for that reason, you know, if we can afford to use that, then, you know, that's the least desirable weapon, and therefore the one that we are least concerned about the ammo. We're not desperate at the moment, but, uh, oh, that looks like a different kind of enemy. That's a rocket trooper. Okay, so that's an issue. Let's have Saeed and Garrus stay there, hoping that is not technically in the sun for Garrus, but, uh, Garrus is off cooldown for overload. And this is a time when Shotgun seems worth using. We are technically now in the sun. That's not good. That was good timing, though. Uh, this Geth Trooper is not dead. Let's charge to get shields back. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that was. You are now dead. Yeah, I think there's just one left. Uh, there's two left. One of them is, I'm almost certain, a Rocket Trooper. I don't think we've taken care of that one yet. And then there's this normal trooper. Let's wait until Garrus gets uh, off cooldown here. I feel like Zaid, I mean, based on how his 
This bar is red. Man, oh, this is Garrus that I'm doing right now. I, I like Garrus' spot, actually. He could, could stay there. I mean, he could, like... Maybe actually get an, a an angle on people to shoot a bit. He got a little bit closer. But uh, I'm wondering if Zaid is technically in the sun right now. So that's the big damage from our charged shotgun blast. This will put him down. I was about to say, except it didn't. It nearly I did not. One. Okay, so yeah, there's the rocket trooper. I really want to blast him with an overload as soon as he pops up. So let's wait until Garrus is off cooldown, then we'll make our move. There he is. And I think the name of the game here against the Geth in this situation is proceed slowly with caution. Because otherwise, uh, you could get overrun. Okay, there is the Geth popping up. Ooh, you still hit us. I was really thinking you were going to get staggered from that. Then you didn't. Then you didn't. And now it's down. And even in some cases where it looks like we're in the shade, we are still taking damage from the, the heat. Here we go. I don't like that. On your six. Oh, we got more coming up here. And ooh, Garrus just went down. That is not good. As we were saying, we are relying on him heavily. The our power damage shields user or shields disruptor so that's that's unfortunate i think there are yeah i think he probably lost a bunch of shields being in the sun probably didn't have enough time to get the shields back in the shade and then on advancing took some hits from that geth that popped up here and that was enough to take him out so i think there are going to be a lot of metagels here on this mission so we may have an opportunity to get him back soon. But oh, where are these other Geth? Yeah. See them on the map. I'm just not seeing. Okay, well, Zaid is apparently running into them over there. Zaid, is that in the shade, technically? It is. Okay, here we go. That's a rocket trooper. So this would be a perfect situation for us to say overload. Oh, Zaid is not, is not in the shade at the moment. Zaid, if you could let move ever so slightly. We can hit. That's several rocket troopers in back. Again? Uh, some of them are. Saeed just taking care of business there. I think he just threw a bunch of Inferno grenades and pet the trick. Well done. Uh, I was gonna say, at least at the moment, the combat music has expired, which was making me hope that perhaps we would get Garrus back. But one of the things about this mission, one of the things about this mission is Geth will pop up when you least expect it. Like, if we go back here, we might even have Geth respawn behind us a little bit. We might be setting ourselves up for a bit of a flank here. But... Let's see. I am curious to see. So we only... Kind of went up this side area part way through by going up that ramp. So I believe we got the got the heavy pistol upgrade at the shield. bottom of said ramp. That's one of the things we wanted to get. There's a uh, anything down here. Don't think anything happens even when your uh, your beeping gets even more intense. There, don't think you can get a, a mission failure or anything like that. Although it does seem as though the uh, the audio makes it sound as if that would be a possibility. Yeah, so we... Yes, we can bring back Garrus. I was kind of hoping that we would get far enough that we would just get him back automatically after taking out those Geth. So yeah, the bottom of these stairs, we got the heavy pistol upgrade. Snap this ammo. Uh, so this is where we went up, and I think it is probably best, in truth, for you to just go up this side area for the entire duration of this component. Otherwise, down here, it is uh, a little bit trickier. There's a lot more sun. There's got to be a better way through here. We're burning up. Yup, as Saeed is saying. That is why. Yeah, I think that Iridium might be the only other thing in this area. 
my life. So this time, let's learn a bit from our mistakes in the previous encounter. Take a second to make sure we get our shields back before we engage. We do now have some additional geth showing up on our radar. Love to get Garrus back. Okay, now I think they have noticed us. Okay, it's a basic trooper. And our in the past, our best opening move was to overload with Garrus. May mean that we're relying a little more heavily on our shotgun. Oh, that is not the ability I meant to use. I meant for that to be a pull, but uh, it is a fast way to move forward. There is that. Let's see, was there anything else? Over here, there's, I mean, that usually is an explosive container, at least it is in Mass Effect 1. I think we're good here. Let's carry on. This is the ammo that guy dropped. Ooh, we got Geth Troopers here, and that looks like a dead Corian. Um, and a damaged Geth Hunter. Okay, we got we got stuff going on here. Again, ideally, we would have been instead leading with the overload, although a fully charged shotgun blast is actually enough. Take these guys out in one shot. Now, Rieger is alive, apparently, but uh, these Corians, less so. Okay, hold on. So we can scan this damage Geth Hunter, but it, you gotta be careful, because uh, if you, <laughs> you get too close, sometimes he'll disappear on you like that, then you just back up, and then you'll be fine. Strangely enough, this area right here, we uh, do not take damage from the sun, and we did get Garrus back, so that's good. So there's that. There's also the Tempest SMG, a new SMG, just usable for basically almost, well, I shouldn't say almost everybody, all our SMG users. I believe that means we will auto equip that. Yeah, and I am a big fan of the Locust, the SMG that we got from Kasumi's loyalty mission. Tempest is solid. Um, I think it's technically, theoretically possible that it's higher damage, but it's less accurate. So it's one of those things where in a perfect situation, it's technically a better gun than the Locust, but the Locust is just, in practice, a lot more usable than the Tempest. So, personally, I'd probably stick with the, uh, probably prefer the Locust, but you can make the case for, uh, for going with the, oh, the Locust. This is Commander Shepard of the Normandy. Can we provide assistance? Patch your radio into channel 617 Theta. We're on a stealth mission, high risk. We found what we were after. The Geth found us. They've got us pinned down. Can't get to our ship. Can't transmit data through the solar radiation. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what are your numbers looking like? It doesn't sound good. I mean, I know he's, he does seem really quiet, so it's a little hard to hear for me as well, but uh, obviously there's, at least the subtitles certainly helps. What's the status of your team? How many of you are left? We were a small squad, dozen Marines plus the science team. We're down to half strength now. Made the synthetic bastards pay for it, though. Okay, I mean, it does sound like there's a lot more Geth than there are Quarians at the moment. What exactly is your mission? What brought you this deep into Geth-controlled space? You're asking the wrong person, Shepard. I just point and shoot. Something about the sun is going bad faster than it should. Some kind of energy problem. That's... Interesting. Uh, we heard about that a bit from the description we were reading upon uh, starting to go here to Hastrum, but we don't really know any more about that. As for the Geth arrival, you know, I mean, this is right in the middle of Geth space and supposedly a Geth stronghold, so I mean, how did you guys get here unnoticed in the first place? Because uh, everything we read about said as soon as you step foot here, you're going to get, uh, even before you step foot here, you're going to get annihilated by all the Geth uh, spaceships. Any idea where the Geth came from? One of the patrol ships found us. Drop ships started raining Geth down on our heads before we could get off world. Systems under Geth control. We knew they made planetary sweeps periodically. We hoped going low emissions would hide us. I mean, you got any more people on the way? Don't have to worry about the Geth sending in reinforcements. Oh, or the Geth? I think so. The patrol ship hasn't lifted off again. The radiation blocks all off world communication. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, what is your status? It doesn't sound good. How are you holding up? We can be there in a few minutes. Take it slow and careful. Direct sunlight fries your shields all to hell. We're bunkered down at base camp across the valley. I left Tally Zora at a secure shelter that doubled back to hold the choke point. Getting Tally out safely is our top priority. If you can extract her, we'll keep him off you. So, Tally's still alive? You've got confirmation that the Geth haven't reached Tally yet? Okay, that's uh, it's good, I suppose, but it does seem like uh, it's a little bit dire at the moment. Hold position. We'll hit their back ranks. Wait, watch your ass. We got a dropship coming in. Right, bro. Oh, that's not good. Alright, we should immediately save. In fact, it's usually good, I think, to save just before you pick up that. Because, uh, there's several things to pick up before you do that. We saw the SMG, we saw the monies, uh, and what? I mean, we got some Iridium, heavy pistol upgrade a little ways back. So, lots of stuff on this mission.